Yeah, time to go home. I tried to warn you. <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. This is actually gonna be a new beginning to a video series. So most of you guys know that last year we started the JK one ton axle series. So, you know, we built junkyard axles, but I've never done a video series on how to beef up your factory axles. So that's what we're gonna start off in this next video series. So we're here at Off-Road Elements. Got all, our, all of our cool friends. We got Scotty, Eric, What's going on? Jillian. Hi. Where's your, where's your little hands? Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah. Scotty's gonna help me out. He's given me, uh, he's given me a hand today. Just Gosh. put high five. I knew it's so cute. What? What's this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I'm a little out of my element here. We're in a big old garage. I'm used to my carport or my yard, but since I'm out of my element, at least we're in off-road elements. They made me say that. That's cute. That was. Oh! oh! oh <laughs> so, like I already mentioned, off-road elements. We are here, Massachusetts. We're gonna start up this axle upgrade video series. Let's start talking about what we're doing kind of important for the coronavirus. Wow, you are good at this. Got to get in your fingers. <laughs> wow! <laughs> <laughs> all right, Scotty's having fun. All right, so we're back to all serious now. This is going to be a three or four part video series talking about how to upgrade your factory axles. Not everybody wants or needs one ton axles. Building a set of Dana 44s is a great idea for 37s, 38s, 39s, and 40s is kind of the limit. That's when you want to go to one tons, in my opinion. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to upgrade your axle, show you guys what we're doing on the Gladiator to handle 37s or bigger. Everybody, everybody bounced. Scotty, what axles do you have on your JK? I have 44s. 44s? Yes. What size tires? 37. Do you like the setup? I love the setup. It is a great setup. I think Jillian has 44s with 39s. Yep. It's it's a very good setup. Before I went to 40s and one tons, I was running 37s on a Pro Rock 44 front, the Rubicon 44 rear, and you know it had the RCVs up front, the chromoly shafts in the rear. It was trussed. It was a great setup. It's a perfect mixture. The Jeep is still lightweight. It's still nimble. You can still beat on it without worrying about breaking things. It's a great setup. So I'm going to show you how to do it. That's what we're doing. So let's go check out all the cool parts over here. Maybe Scotty will assist us. Maybe. Maybe. I'm really trying to involve Scotty. Get your hands. Scotty's... Oh, no. Oh, those are ugly. So this is what we're going to be talking about in this video series. We're going to be installing all of this probably this weekend. I don't know. Maybe not. Scotty's trying to go home. It's the weekend. So we do have RCV front axle shafts. A truss from Seven Slot Customs, C gussets, front lower control arm skid plates from Clayton Off Road, Yukon hardcore diff covers, Yukon gears and install kits running 513s, and then we have the Yukon chromoly rear shafts. And sway bar links. Those are not mine. I mean, we'll put them on. <laughs> so, this is going to kind of be the fundamental, basic way to beef up your axles to handle larger tires. It's going to be a fun kind of video process to show you guys because it's not it's not overly complicated it's not like a one ton swap where it's going to cost you a crap ton of money it's not going to take a lot of time and your jeep is honestly it's going to drive exactly the same as it does stock whereas if you go to one tons it's going to handle difference there's a lot more weight so it's going to be a little slower it's going to affect your miles per gallon this stuff it's not bolt on but you do it and then you don't even notice that it's there until you're on the trails and you're not breaking stuff so first thing i think we should do Go check out all the Jeeps in the parking lot. See who else is running 37s and 44s. Are there Jeeps out in the parking lot that run 37s and 44s? Probably not. Probably not. No. All right. <laughs> now, for those of you that have a Dana 30 in the front, that's where it gets tricky. <laughs> that's where it gets tricky. You can still do all these things. You can still add RCVs. You can still re-gear it. You can still add a truss to it. But is it worth it? In my opinion, no, unless you're staying on 35s. So. All this stuff I'm talking about, if you're on a Dana 30, I'd highly recommend either getting an Ultimate Dana 44, any type of aftermarket 44 is going to be a little cheaper than buying a, a factory Rubicon front 44 than doing all this stuff. In the end, it's cheaper just to buy some. And I wish Jillian was here right now, so maybe she could give herself a plug. I wonder who sells 44s? Oh, Alfred Elman sells 44s. Oh. Anyway, we'll, we'll have to edit that. We'll be right back. <laughs> we sell 44s. 
All right, so if you are looking for a Dana 44, hit up Off-Road Elements. All right, so just out here alone in the parking lot, we're starting off with this Jeep. Looks like what, 37s? Terraflex 44 front. Right here, we have a factory Rubicon 44 front, trust. We have Scotty's Jeep, Rubicon Dana 44 front. Pro Molly shafts? Yes, Pro Molly shafts, not RCVs, but still stronger than uh, factory. Okay, we got a stock Jeep. That was not nice. <laughs> Welcome to Massachusetts, right? We have Jillian's two-door JK on a 44 rear, 39s, and a Pro Rock front axle with RCVs. And then the last Jeep is the Off-Road Elements Maverick JLR. They're actually running 40s on Rubicon axles. Stock JL axle with 513 Yukon gears and RCV axle shafts. So I definitely don't want you to think I'm downplaying the need for one tons. If you have a really heavy foot, you know, you're like to off-road, you like to bounce a lot, even with 37s, you might need one tons. When you're going to 40s, you're definitely gonna want one tons if you off-road really, really hard. Could you get away with 40s on a Dana 44 that's built, you know, front and rear, chromoly, truss, axle shafts, all that good stuff? Yeah, you can. You just have to kind of be smart on how you wheel it. So, got a lot of cool stuff coming up. We're gonna do all of these installs, really build up the JL Rubicon 44s, and then we're gonna be testing it out at Easter Jeep Safari in Moab. It's gonna be a fun video series and I'm excited to uh, you know share it with you guys. It's not gonna be as step by freaking step as the one ton swap was, because a lot of the stuff was already covered. I've already made a video on how to re-gear a Dana 60. It's pretty much the same thing across any Dana axle. There's a few small variations. So in this video, you know, when we get to the gears, we're gonna do, you know, we're gonna record it. It's just not gonna be step by step. So you could actually go back and refer to my old video and you'd probably be able to do it, but honestly, if you're not familiar with gear setups, I'd recommend taking it to a shop. It's not too much, and it's, it's, it's one of those jobs where you could really mess up. So all this other stuff should be really good to go. Scotty's over here messing with my crap. Yeah, he's gonna take this extra, 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 extra large t-shirt. That's me, Bubba. I didn't even know that was in there. Yeah. We got a nice, cool. It's not in there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I think that, are you ready to start working? I'm ready. Sweet. Ready. I might go eat though. Is it? break time so i know a lot of you guys right now might be have been there i'm the guy that likes to do all this stuff in my garage i've always said you know it's better to do it yourself don't pay a shop to do it save money i'll be real with you guys i'm getting a little bit burnt out on working outside of my garage i'm not gonna lie you know it's probably i've been making videos for three years i need a little break i want to get all this done without you know if i was gonna do all this at home it would take me a month a month if not more plus making videos so i almost need this little break to get all this done kind of relieve some stress off me we'll get this done and sometimes it's nice you know to take it to a shop most of the times they're not gonna let you work with them like we're about to do no that's not gonna happen it is okay to take your jeep to a shop it is okay to pay somebody to install it i just wouldn't recommend it all the time that's just me though take it to scotty so he can get paid well, I think that's it for this video. We're gonna go ahead and get started on this axle build video series. Stay tuned for the next video. Please give this a thumbs up. Go down in the comments and let me know what your experience on built 44s are. You know, what axle setup are you running? What tire size? What have you had good luck with? Are you still on a Dana 30 and somehow you've managed to make your 42s last? Let me know in the comments and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.